Hey guys, this is Adam with Stratico. I'm over here with Kevin at Gulf Coast Inspection Service. Correct. All right. And so when we buy a house, we get a guy like this to help us out. And we really focus on some major areas, the roof, the foundation, the HVAC system, we even the electrical and the plumbing as well, because all of these things are costly. The floors and the cabinets, that's kind of an easy cost to figure out. But all this other stuff is really unknown and can be a little expensive or very expensive. And so Kevin helps us figure these things out. And he was just going over something that he found and what we got. Yeah, yeah. Let, let's take a let's take a walk over there. So the air conditioner on this house is uh, the, the condenser is the portion of the air conditioner that's located on the outside of the house. And you have the air handlers and the furnace that are located in this particular house in a bedroom closet. I didn't even room. notice that it was in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, this house is, is what, 50 plus years old, yeah. probably? And and so um, we, we weren't putting air conditioning systems in the attic back then. So we, we always found some place inside the house that was centrally located to put the air conditioning. So this is a gas unit called a vertical forced air split system. Um, it's a train brand. This particular unit is a 1990 model, so it's 30 plus years old. The condenser is a 1998 model. So the way we put it in, in, in home inspection terms is that they probably exceeded their typical life expectancy. And, and so, hold on one second. Zach, how, what's, what, what year were you born? 2003. Yeah. So, it's older than Zach. It's older than Zach. Right, right. Okay. And so, um, so one of the things we look at with air conditioning systems is, is you know, we're gonna we're gonna look, we're gonna take the cover off, and we're gonna yeah. look at the, the exchanger and all this other stuff, but we want to make sure that it's functioning as efficiently as it can. When a unit reaches a certain age, anything that restricts the function of the unit is going to be detrimental to that unit. And so, one of the things we look at on this one, uh, what we noticed was that the return air grill, which is located on the exterior wall, is only 18 inches by 18 inches big. Yeah. And so typically on a three-ton unit, now there are other variables, duct size, that sort of thing, but typically on a, on a three-ton unit, we'd like to see at least a 24-inch by 24-inch return air system. So you're already having some restriction. So why do you need to see it bigger than that, than what they have? Because we, we, want, we want it to be as efficient as possible, which okay. means, so an air conditioning does a couple of things. One of the things it does is that it reduces heat or it cools, but it also reduces humidity inside of the house. Okay. And so when you have a properly sized return air grill, you're reducing the humidity efficiently. Okay. So you, you'll get less of a musty smell. Not only that, when a, when a unit reaches this age, um, we want everything to be working optimally. Yeah. As, you know, yeah. and, and things that we no can, restrictions, right. Like the size of the air, right? Okay. We may not be able to control every electronic piece that's working on the air conditioner, but we can control how much air is being drawn in the return air system. Gotcha. Okay. So that's what we're looking at on this house. It's an easy repair, yeah. But it's one that should probably be considered. All right. So, so another thing that we look at that's real important on, especially older houses in the '60s, '70s, '80s, probably the most popular panel box on the market was a, a, by a company called Federal Pacific. Um, and this was a, a Federal Pacific Stab Lock panel box. Um, and what happened with these panel boxes is um, um, some of their breakers wouldn't trip when there was a surge. And so because they wouldn't trip, the surge continued, house fires had started, and, and um, anyway, a lot, a lot of uh, class action lawsuits, a lot of government interference, bank, bankrupt of the company, they got a business. So now anytime that we see one of these panel boxes or anything Stab Lock related, your return, uh, your shut off for your air, con uh, your condenser outside is also a PV stab lock shut off. Anytime we see this with these breakers, we automatically uh, recommend replacement. And so um, something like this, if if we can keep the panel box here, not move it, and not have to mess with anything else but the panel box and the breakers, you're probably looking at about two thousand dollars. Yep. To replace. Um, but that's yeah. something that should be considered also. Yeah, we've done a few of these in, in my career for, for sure because these are the houses that you get the better deal on and they always typically come with these uh, Federal Pacific panel. And so uh, what does the stab lock mean? What is, it's what just, is, it's like kind a, of a, brand? a Ford Ranger. Okay. It's the Ranger of the Ford. So it's okay. Federal Pacific is the company, stab lock is the brand. Gotcha. The model. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. So Kevin's about to share with us the hot water tank now that we're in the uh, hallway. So yeah. So and uh, and so just for clarity, Adam, this is my own little personal pet peeve. These are this is this is a, a water heater. It heats water. Okay. To call it a hot water heater would be awfully redundant. So. <laughs> This is a water heater. If it was a hot water heater, it would have a bikini wrapped around it. Okay. 
So on this, I one, gotta remember that because we use Kevin all the time, and and boy, it just stabs him whenever I say hot water. Right, day. right. And so this particular water heater has been replaced, which is a good thing in our house this age. But there are two things that off the bat that I'm noticing that um, are are de deficient, and one of these is this is the temp temperature pressure relief valve. It relieves pressure should the water heater overheat. However, it's a one inch um, drain and valve but they've reduced it to a quarter inch drain line. That's a no-no. It's gotta be the same size as the valve and the, and the nipple that connects to the, to the drain line. The other thing that we're noticing is that gas water heaters, uh, so on these newer water heaters, there's no, there's no pilot line. There's not an ongoing flame. It's a glow plug. Okay. And so gas comes, up, the gas comes across the glow plug when it wants to ignite, it fires up, heats the water, and shuts down. Okay. But at some point you have an open flame down there that is heating up sure. the water. Anytime you house a gas water heater in a storage setting, in other words, I could put paint, WD-40, flammable liquids, yeah. all on the ground next to the water heater. Anything yeah. that this, anytime the water heater is housed in that sort of setting, we have to elevate the water heater 18 inches. Okay. So this water heater should technically be elevated off of the ground 18 inches. And what do you know, they sell little metal bases that are exactly 18 inches high just for water heaters. Gotcha. So those Perfect. are the two things that I would call right now on this, on this unit. Okay. Sounds great. All right. Hey guys, so thank you for participating in this little inspection walkthrough with our guy Kevin. And go check out his uh, company, Gulf Coast Inspection Services. And so if you like what you see, go ahead and like and subscribe to our channel. Help with that YouTube algorithm. And uh, y'all go ahead and have a great day.